Hey, what's up guys? So I've got another application here for the trig board that you might find useful, and that is being able to wake it up using motion. So with a PIR sensor attached to the trig board, I'll wave my hand in front of the sensor. It just woke up. It's going to connect to the Wi-Fi hotspot and send out that push notification to my smartphone. So there you see it, motion detected. So let's dig into this. So I actually saw this as a request in some of the comments in recent TrigBoard videos and thought that's a really good idea for this because now you can monitor a large open space or actually create something like a walk-by type sensor, which is what I'm doing with this TrigBoard here. I wrapped the PIR sensor up with some electrical tape to just focus the motion detection area and I'm going to put this on a doorway that doesn't actually have a physical door. So now anytime somebody or even an animal walks by, I can get that notification on my phone. Uh, so very cool. And uh, just, just before I jump into this, in case you're not familiar with the trig board, it is an ultra low power platform for the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. The board itself sleeps at less than one microamp. And typically I've hooked up a cheap magnetic door sensor to it. So anytime the door, uh, the garage, the mailbox, the doorbell, whatever you want opens, I get that notification on my phone. And we're using a, right now, push saver for that service. So uh, all pretty easy to get up and running. So the PIR sensor, this is uh, a very cool thing, but it's also kind of tricky. So PIR sensors, like this need current, okay? That is a sensor, it is an always on sensor. It's not just like uh, a dry contact like this. There's some smarts in there. So a lot of times you're gonna find these will pull a lot of current in the milliamps. I found this one here though, only pulls about 10 or 12 microamps. So that's perfect for this. It's not as low as the trig board itself, which is under a microamp, but it's still pretty good and you're going to get a lot of battery life from this. Um, if you pay a lot more, you can get PIR sensors down in the single digit microamps. But for what it's worth, these uh, cheap ones will work just fine. So let's dig into this and I'll show you how to hook it up. So here's the wiki page I created just for this modification. And keep in mind that you will need some decent soldering skills to hook this up because it is a hack into it. If there is enough interest here, I will make a separate adapter board just for the PIR sensor so that it hooks up much more easily than the way I'm showing it here. So you will need that PIR sensor. I'm using the one here on Amazon. It's based on the AM312 PIR sensor, which uh, you can Google and you can find data sheets for and hookup diagrams uh, and all kinds of stuff. It's a very popular PIR sensor and I like it because it's actually the smarts are in the sensor head itself not down on the board. The board is nothing more than just a linear regulator taking whatever input voltage you have here and dropping it down to three volts for the sensor. Oh and there's a schematic for it right there. So I actually like this one a lot. It is uh, fairly low cost. Let's see I probably have the Amazon page. So there it is, 10 bucks for two of them, and I'm sure you can find it for even cheaper. So back to the wiki page here. Uh, you also need a one microfarad capacitor, uh, and any, any capacitor you have lying around will work for this. And then you, to set this up, you have to modify the trig board slightly. So I've, I have these jumpers down on the board, these little solder jumpers, and you will have to cut the two normally closed jumpers. So the way the board ships out, you'll see these two jumpers here and they're actually trace jumpers. So you'd have to take an X-Acto knife and kind of cut in right there and be very careful doing this because if you go up too high or too low, you might cut some traces on the board and uh, it will no longer wake up. So be very careful, try to stay within the white lines there when you're cutting that jumper. And then also this one here, uh, but on this side, you want to go up a little higher there because there is a trace that you want to cut as part of this, which I'll, I'll show you in a second. And then you 
kind of bead in some solder there on the two bottom jumpers there, the normally open jumpers. So if I go to the layout here, I just want to show you that trace. So you're cutting there and you're cutting there, but you're also cutting a little high to cut this trace as well. And again, just be as careful as you can doing that and make sure that you're cutting all the way through and that, that there is no contact uh, in that trace or in these jumpers. Uh, and, and it will help to have a magnifying glass or something to, to really see what you're doing there. So I'm going to go back to the wiki and you can see there in my diagram the two cuts and then also a little higher on this side to also cut that, that uh, trace there. I won't get into this too much, but here's the schematic just to show you what we're doing. So we're filling in JP2 and JP4. We're cutting JP3 and JP1 to basically disable the normally closed operation. We want to enable the normally open operation of the tray board, which enables this inverter here because the output from the PIR is active high, meaning that when it detects motion, the output signal goes high. But the whole trig board circuit here requires an active low pulse. So the inverter here does that for us. So we feed this with that high signal, and then it inverts it, giving us the low pulse through R6 and, R and C5 there. Okay, so that's what we're doing, but we're also cutting that extra trace there to disable the supervisor circuit up here because we don't want to back feed that. So we're cutting that trace there so that our input only to the, the trig board is from the PIR sensor. So hopefully all that makes sense. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. Just follow these instructions and you'll be good to go. So again, cut those two jumpers, fill in the two normally open jumpers, and then kind of going down here, you also need to add that one microfarad capacitor across the output of the PIR sensor and ground. So just like that. And that is going to help the output of the PIR sensor actually wake and, tr and trigger the trig board, okay? And then you have a few locations you can hook stuff up to. So, and I, I actually did this two different ways here. So you can see there I used ground up there for this PIR sensor. And then the VBAT I picked up off of the wake button down there. This one I did it differently. I use the VBAT straight from the input from the battery down there on that GS, JST connector pin and then ground on the other side of this reset button. So you see I've got all of those labeled here so you can use ground there, ground up there, the VBAT right there or the VBAT there and then the PIR output has to go to the bottom right jumper. So after you fill those in just run a wire down over to that so just to kind of zoom in on it here, you can see the, the cuts there and then also cut a little bit high there to cut that other trace. Again, very carefully watching, I stopped just in time before cutting this trace. And then uh, the PIR right there at the bottom right jumper. And that's it. That's all you need to do. Um, so very, very easy, I think, to hook up. Uh, but it's also very easy to screw this up, so be careful. Yeah, so just a couple other quick notes about this PIR sensor that you got to watch out for. Anytime it detects motion, it's going to wake the trig board up. So if you're monitoring an entire room that's pretty busy, you're going to get hundreds and hundreds of notifications a day, and that's going to drive you crazy. So you, uh, and, and there are no adjustments for this PIR sensor. You can't change the delay time, the sensitivity, or anything. So you got to keep that in mind and kind of be careful of your placement for this, uh, the PIR sensor. So uh, just to give you a couple examples of what I'm going to do with this, um, first the walk-by sensor. So that's cool. I'll put that in a doorway so anytime somebody walks by, I get the notification. And even that might get a little busy, but, you know, that, that is what it is there. Then this one I'm going to put in a storage area that has a window so if, you know, if there's ever a break in on that window or whatever, um, I get the notification. It's a very rarely used room though. So I'm not expecting a lot of traffic in there. So again, it will be fine if I get notifications, if somebody goes down there just to pull something out, that's no big deal. But what I really want to watch out for is a break in, in that room. So 
that's uh, that's everything I got on the PIR sensors uh, hooking up to the trig board. If you got uh, if if, you, if there's a lot of interest here, let me know again, and maybe I'll make a little adapter board. I could probably add in some external adjustments, like I just mentioned, for a delay reaction time, or actually maybe once it gets triggered, you know, wait another 10 minutes before resetting itself to detect a, a new motion in that room. So I can do things like that, though, with my own custom board. So let me know if that sounds interesting to you. Otherwise, that's everything I got in this video. Thanks for watching.